Hello, everyone. Welcome to another stream. Uh, we're going to just do another Q&A with uh, Matt. He should be here very shortly. Sent him the link here. Um, and I apologize. My, the timing was set to 1020 for some reason. It was 20 minutes. Er it was like 10 minutes early. And uh, the timing wasn't right. So now I was actually supposed to start the stream at 1030, which is what it is now. So yeah, just feel free to uh, ask your questions, and uh, and uh, we Matt should be here shortly. All right, cool. So I see some questions already. Kinsey asks, "What type of water is best for health?" Um, that could have a very complicated answer. I'm sure Matt would have a complicated answer to that. My my best answer is just. Um, Water without fluoride, water without uh, chlorine. So those are the, t the two biggest toxins you're going to find in the water supply, fluoride and chlorine. So just get water that's like, um, there's, there's a debate between like, okay, is mineral water good or is distilled water good? Um, I'd be curious to know what Matt says about that. Um, I think Matt gets a lot of his water just from fruit and stuff. Um, I do drink water. I drink, I get a lot of my water just from fluid, like tea and stuff. Captain Genesis says, Vegan Gains got his YouTube channel back. Oh, actually, I saw that. Uh, I didn't get the chance to watch his video, but I saw it on my, my feed. Um, so, some, re yeah, that's awesome. Um, I, I'm a fan of the video, but I saw it on my, my hey, feed. Hey, Matt's back. Matt's here. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I uh, I haven't used this computer on here. It looks like I can't even see myself, but oh well. Camera oh, doesn't seem to work. Oh, you can't turn your camera on? It says it doesn't work on this one, but I know my camera works. Very weird. Hmm. All right. Well, we at least we got a picture of you. We got two pictures. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, um. We got some questions already. Somebody asked about water. So Matt, what would you say about water? What is the best ideal type of water? I was just explaining like, okay, there's fluoride, there's chlorine, you gotta watch out for. But yeah. I'm sure you'd have a, a more advanced answer to this question. What, what's, what is the ideal water for health? Okay, it depends on uh, when, you're be, when you're drinking this water. If you're drinking water around a meal, then pH has a tendency to really matter. Distilled water usually starts out at a pH of about 7.0, so it's equal with the human body, and it's very good. Unfortunately, when you pop the lid off of distilled water, the uh, carbon in the atmosphere starts to get absorbed by the uh, distilled water because it distilled is empty water. It really It's a powerful solvent, so what happens is that the distilled water becomes carbonic acid. So the pH drops to around about five. So it gets really acidic. And um, distilled water would normally be one of the best choices for that, but you don't want to. So it's a good one to have on an empty stomach or it's a good one. To, uh, it's really good to have when you're having a meal. However, when you're, when you're drinking um, water with food, that's a, a little bit different. Well, uh, you, wait, right, did right. you say distilled water is good to have with a meal? Yes, it would be right because wouldn't it, so you're saying it wouldn't dilute the stomach acid. No, it would make it stronger because it is an acid. Wow. So see what happens is um, when you when people take Tums, that's highly alkaline and that's neutralizing stomach acid. That's making it weaker. So most people think that to drink alkaline water with food is good when it's not because our hydrochloric acid of our stomach is actually what we want to have stronger. So taking acidic water helps digestion. OK, like um, and like a, a kombucha would help for digestion, right? Exactly. Exactly. That's and probably why they do work really good. Car I would think like carbonated water would be like a good digestive aid because of the carbonic acid. Right. Exactly. exactly. And I thought, yeah. see, I thought I was under the impression that distilled water was kind of neutral pH, but you're saying it's actually acidic. Yeah. It drops to acidity the second you pop the lid off. It was when you get home and you have a new uh, distilled water, it's 7.0 and it's neutral. So you can drink that and it would be neutral water. But the second you open that lid, it's going to start sucking the carbon out of the atmosphere, carbon dioxide. So what's going to happen is it's going to turn into carbonic acid. So it'll drop its pH as time goes on. Okay. So are, are you a fan of mineral water now? Like I, I'm, I'm, I think that 
certain mineral waters are better than others. Like you want a mineral water that's high in magnesium, silica, but then you don't want one that's high in calcium. Too much calcium in mineral water would be bad. Right. You would want to take a mineral water with food because minerals don't absorb without cofactors. So if you're just going to drink a bunch of minerals, you don't expect a high amount of what you, you know, you wouldn't ever expect abs absorption. It's just going to cause your kidneys to be taxed. So you want very low TDS on an empty stomach and mineral water during a meal. That would be more optimal. And as far as other types of to toxins in the water supply that we'd want to filter out, I imagine that there's be there'd even be things like uh drugs in the water supply and, and hormone um, that would alter your hormones because it's like uh, 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 those drugs that, that women take to, to make sure they don't get pregnant. That's why those uh, distilled waters are really good in reverse osmosis. They filter out as much as possible. And like you said, general tap water has all kinds of uh, prescription medication in it. It's really bad. General tap water is. Yeah. And there's probably even radiation in the water, I bet. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a it's a mess. General tap water is horrible. They don't filter it enough. Right. Okay. So that's a general answer to the water question. Oh, you were telling me before you get a lot of your water just from fruit. Do you drink like water, or do you just get it all from fruit? Uh, I would if I got really thirsty and I'm I'm still fasting. If in my in my window, I would drink something like that, like or like you, like an herbal tea. Correct. I don't want to spike insulin for no reason. Okay. Right. Okay. You wouldn't just tr eat a bunch of fruit just to quench your thirst. Correct. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Um, all right. So what else here we got? Um, uh, Aiden says, Rowan, some things are so stupid that we can know that they are untrue, like God. When will you get this? And he's quoting Devin Tracy. I know there is no God. Devin Tracy. Uh, <laughs> I don't think, um, I don't know how anyone could know that there is or isn't a God. I think we should all remain agnostic about it personally. I think that, um, yeah, I just, I've been seeing more atheists saying that they know there is no God, like even Amin Ra, like you talked to Amin Ra, right, Matt? Or you, you, yeah. you haven't talked to him, but you've kind of tried to uh, refute him, right? Uh, yeah, I would have liked to have had a conversation so that he could have actually presented his best evidence. Uh, I think that he's already done that with his videos, which is why when I do comment back, he has no rebuttal. That's why he avoids me. But to also say that they know that there is no God, you're basically calling 95% of the world wrong. And that's like saying that you can also claim to know more than 95% of the world. And the top, if you look at the top eight smartest people on earth, they're the top 10, um, they are theists everyone. So that's pretty, pretty interesting as well. You're all, you're basically calling them foolish as well. Right. I mean, I mean, I'm sympathetic to the people who like the atheists, like when I was an atheist, I was like an old fashioned type of atheist that was like an agnostic atheist. Like that's what most atheists were. And I think, I think a lot of atheists still are agnostic atheists, meaning like they're not claiming to know anything. Right. And then, sure. and then I saw this progression of a lot of atheists acting like they know all of a sudden and they're 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 leaving the realm of agnosticism and then they're like making knowledge claims on weird stuff like that and and Amen Ra is actually one of these guys that does that he's like now he's saying he's a gnostic atheist like he knows there's no god and it's like what the heck how does anyone know that whatever happened to like humility and like admitting what we don't know like that's, well, that's an important thing they're not atheists they're anti-theist mm that's a big difference. You, when you hate God, you're gonna, you're just gonna claim that you know He doesn't exist. It, it ends the argument. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. So next question, Kinsey asks, um, "What do you want your overall legacy to be?" Well, you know me. I'm not into the idea of legacy. I, I think of leaving a legacy, like if you were to die and then have this legacy, to me, that's worthless. Like how people remember you after if you were to die, that's like pointless. So to me. You know, my only legacy that I'm concerned about is like living forever. Like I want to be my legacy is like the guy that lives forever and never died. You know, that's the only kind of legacy I want is what do you think, Matt? What's what do you what do you what's your take on the whole legacy idea? 
I don't know. Perhaps I have a different um, idea of what legacy means. Like I can have a legacy left behind right now and I'm still alive. So I guess if I can make a, I can make a destiny or a fate for myself and have a legacy. Sure. I would have one right now. I would be one of the, I would like to be one of the known as one of the pioneers to help overturn the concept of, of uh, biological death. It would be a wonderful thing to get people interested and have them uh, learn the diligence and willpower. And we're the ones that help that movement. We can be the first generation to be alive that actually lived while death was actually part of society. That would be a fascinating thing. Imagine being a few hundred years old and they would be like, wow, what was it like to actually have a, a live a life where you were had the possibility of dying from old age? It would be like, well, you know, we, we had our fingers crossed that we weren't going to die in a car wreck. And that, you know, we could make it to this uh, singularity or this new uh, invention or this new concept, whatever it may be. It could be a genetic adaptation. We know that um, we can turn on some of these longevity genes. There's a lot of potential. So it would be that would be mine. I like that. Uh, see, like when I hear the word legacy, I, I just get triggered because I immediately think of like legacy after death. But like there is such a thing as a living legacy. And I, I've that's cool. Like I want the legacy of living legacy of, uh, I guess being into like helping people live forever and, and sharing that type of, uh, the gospel of eternal life, I guess you could say, but, uh, I like yours there. That's a good, and I think you're, you are, you're doing a massive contribution to, you know, the field of anti-aging, like with your book, never age. Like that's, that's a great living legacy to have. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, next question here. Oh, some of these, some people are posting links. They're getting blocked. I see. I should probably vet these beforehand. Um, I think I'll trust it. I think they'll be okay here. Okay. You guys can't hear this. You can't even hear this, right, Matt? No, I hear nothing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the audio thing's not working with the Google Hangouts. Stupid Google Hangouts doesn't let you share audio. You've done a lot of Google Hangouts. Have you figured out how to get the audio working in them? No, I usually don't start my own. I join others. It's not really anything that I deal with. Right. It's just the audio. Stupid audio is not working. Well, what's your take on Hillary Clinton? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I mean, uh... I don't, I don't study, po I don't follow politics. You know, it's, uh, it's too hard to make a comment on something that I don't really follow. I, I had to follow Hillary Clinton um, a lot during the election because I was like campaigning against her. I wanted everyone to vote for Donald Trump. So I, I learned quite a few things. I got red pilled on Hillary Clinton. She supposedly, she's one of these people you got to be careful with because like if you cross her the wrong way, she could put you on a hit list. And she has this like supposed you know, in the conspiracy theory circle, she has this supposed like list of people she's taken out essentially. So yeah, I've heard of that actually. Got to be careful with the Hillary, with the Clintons in general. Don't, uh, <laughs> it's a scary world. Um, okay. Southpaw says, what is the biggest waste of taxes currently in your opinion? What do you think, Matt? Well, most of the money actually goes to military. 50% of all money that's actually spent goes to military funds. And that and war is so big that uh, that's that's huge. Now, am I saying that they shouldn't spend money on that? Uh, well, no, because there's too many people actually involved. So as long as you're paying the people, I guess that would be fine. But really, we're upgrading things that really, if they could just not pay the military for one year, I can't even tell you how many hundreds of billions of dollars that would be. That would be pretty that would be huge. Um, I haven't actually looked at the numbers of what all uh, gets spent on and what everybody pay, where their taxes actually go. But I know that over 50% go to military. That seems like a big waste when, when we can literally just lay off of it for a while. We are the strongest military on earth, bar none. We could push one button and eradicate anybody in one second. I mean, there's, there's nothing that we need. We don't need to be paying soldiers random places for doing nothing. Right. Uh, the, so yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Um, yeah, the shame we we're not investing. Like if the government had a, it should have a whole department on how to, you know, cure aging. Like there should be a department of the government, like dedicated to curing aging and curing all diseases. Unfortunately, it's, it's not that way. Priorities um, are way wrong. I would say like a biggest way, a big waste is like NASA. Like why are we funding NASA? Why are we so concerned about, 
exploring outer space when we haven't even explored explored the inner space of our bodies and learned all the in intricacies of health and all the studies that could be done on health. And that's more of a service to humanity and, and Americans, right? Our taxpayer dollars. Isn't it more important that our taxpayer dollars are going to our own health rather than what's out there in space? Like who cares what's out in space, you know? <laughs> right? I like that. That's funny. That's a good one. Yeah, like let's cure aging, like NASA. Like let's just cancel NASA. Forget that. <laughs> like if if there's going to be a NASA, that should be privately funded. You know, some some private privately funded. Well, I don't get why America's funding NASA. It doesn't even make sense. Um, Captain Genesis says, uh, "What are the biggest flaws in the thoughts and minds of the typical transhumanist?" Um, I would say the biggest the biggest one that I can see is that they're so focused on, I guess, waiting for the next scientific advancement that might help them when really they're not paying attention to what's available right now, as far as like supplementation and lifestyle changes and dietary things we could do right now. It's like, they're kind of neglecting that and just kind of crossing their fingers that any day some scientists might figure it out. Like, Come on, we gotta have responsibility more for our eternal life. Um, and the other, the other one I would say would be like maybe a lack of fear of God. I have not seen many transhumanists talk about the idea that maybe this life is a test. Maybe there we're in a simulation, and maybe there's a, a, a hypothetical God that's gonna judge us all and is watching us and observing our actions and might judge us. Like that's a kind of important thing that I see, I think a lot of them are, are neglecting. It's like they're not really God fearing. I'm sure there are. I'm, there are some, but it's 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 rare. What what would you say to this? Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen the community. They're uh, they're very reliant on hoping that the future itself takes care of all the problems for them. They go, we're just waiting for the singularity. So in the meantime, they're eating pizza. They they're doing whatever they're they're reliant upon hope in a very big way that other people do it for them and they don't realize the potential that they have themselves to already start the process so they they have some diligence and willpower so if it comes along and they're like hey guess what uh we figured it out genetically but there's also epigenetic tags that are going to allow you to turn these genes on all you have to do is do this and they're going to be like wait i have to do something that's good that's horrible you know they're not going to want to they're waiting for the the machinery to do it all for us. Yeah. They're just like waiting for the pill, the magic pill. It's like, no, like, come on. We have to, <laughs> we have to look at what's available to us right now. And there's really so much that's like unexplored. We have to be the, the trailblazers and figure it out ourselves, you know? Yeah. Like, I think even what's available to us right now, it literally might be enough. If everyone, there might be a certain path a mode of living with the right lifestyle and actions and, and diet and supplementation that literally could be enough. And like, it literally could be enough to stop aging. And we don't even know because not enough people are doing it. Right. We can look at Yao, Lao Yun Chin who died in uh, 19, um, uh, what was it? 88. And he was in our uh, times magazine in 1931. He was a uh, 197 years old and he had a program very down very very well but when the military general wanted to do a study on his life and he went down into town he actually uh was persuaded by the general to partake in the type of meal and diet that he was uh, never um you know attributed to being eaten in the past and he he went down really really quick so right, i heard about that, him that was too bad i guess there's some debate as far as like i guess it's not officially verified but you know it could be legit. Like, well, the thing knows? is he lived through 11 generations of his grandchildren who vouched for it. So there's a couple of things that actually vouched for. Uh, one was the Imperial, uh, the Imperial China emperor at the time. Uh, both gave him plaques for his longevity um, every 50 years. So he, they started at 150. So they gave him one at 150 years old and then at around 200 years old. So he was very, very old. Wow. Yeah. All right. Um, uh jordan miller okay wait there's oh you got a lot of questions we'll blow through them quicker this time. yeah we'll go through them quicker okay um someone's sending a link here 
a SpongeBob link. They must have saw my last thing where I was like upset, upset with SpongeBob. I'm glad your friend though he switched off his SpongeBob thing. <laughs> he doesn't have the the guy I was talking to. He doesn't have a SpongeBob icon anymore. Uh, you wave it in the air and it makes you live forever. Nice. What are they waving? I don't even see that. Um, Captain Genesis. Aliens do exist. People are posting links. What is this? Are you seeing this? Yeah. I don't know what I'm seeing. <laughs> Some <laughs> like alien, alien baby gift. Do you think aliens exist, Matt? I don't know. There's a, there's no evidence, so. Right. Every 99% of space is lethal. I hope aliens exist. I mean, that would be awesome, especially if they're going to maybe, if aliens existed, maybe they would help us live forever. I, I've thought about that before. Like if aliens are super powerful, maybe they have technology and could give it to people if they really deserved it. I don't know, but it's, it's hopeful, hopefully. Um, but yeah, there's no evidence. Like you said, Jordan Miller says, is there a way to cure STDs? I'll let you handle this one, Matt. Okay, well, um, uh, STDs is a broad spectrum term, so we can we can deduce with the uh, the highest probable uh, problems that there are. We can take HIV, human papilla, uh, so the viral infection, very very hard, right? So this is a, a step above a normal STD. Most people can take a antibiotic and get rid of an STD. However, HIV, nobody can. So the best way to explain that would be. There are there. There's a there's a lot of ways to actually get rid of HIV. Uh, matter of fact, one of the most powerful ones is a uh, black cumin seed. So that's a really powerful one. That's very very antiviral. So if you want to take precautions, yeah, there's there's a bunch. Uh, the milk thistle seed. There's curcumin. There's uh you know just eating a bunch of mixed fruit in general has found that they they found that the polyphenol rich fruit juices and and things like that are very powerful boosting t-cell homo homeostasis and then we have neem leaf you use that to probably brush your teeth i remember rowan that right, one i do neem oil neem oil people is the best thing to brush your teeth with kills all the bacteria in your mouth like really well exactly that, that that's actually shown to increase d uh, or cd4 cells which patients that have hiv and aids so we know that if you stick to the natural compounds, yeah, there's a lot of things. If I can remember, it's uh, there's selenium that's found in like goji berries. There's um, elderberries and green tea and cinnamon have extracts that block HIV-1 entry and infection. There's licorice root. There's sumac. Uh, whew, American ginseng, Korean ginseng, they both contain alkaloids and phytonutrients that block everything. There's uh, the Chinese traditional herbs. There's lemongrass and lemon juice itself, because that gets rid of the oral thrush, which is that white looking tongue that you have when you stick your tongue out. That's when bacteria builds up too much and it actually comes up the esophagus and shows up on the tongue. So that's pretty cool. There's tea tree oil, mm, you know, St. John's wort is an herbal tea that it, that inhibits uh, viral infections, which most STDs are. So yeah, um, I can give you guys a list and post them in the comment section when the video's over and that'll, those, those alone right there eradicate almost all STDs. So. Awesome. Well, there's a lot of things to try, Jordan. Uh, if you have an STD or maybe you're asking for a friend, I'm not going to assume anything. But you guys, don't feel comfortable with the idea that you could just cure your STDs. Like, I have to stress that. Like, there might be STDs that we can't cure, like that are uncurable. Like, it's possible. I'd like to think we can cure them all and everything, but like maybe not. So be afraid. Be very afraid of the STDs, you guys. <clears throat> um, Nishi says, what other characters do you hate besides SpongeBob? Uh, <laughs> um, I hate uh, Peter Pan because Peter Pan said, um, he said, dying would be a great adventure. What kind of lame crap is that? And he's telling that to children. Like a, that's a kid's movie. In, in in brainwashing kids to think that death is some kind of adventure. I don't like that. <clears throat> How about you, Matt? Any characters you hate? Uh, not really. <laughs> I don't know them any. I don't. I don't watch shows. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, most of the Disney villains, I'm sure, are pretty despicable people. Um, <laughs> Kinsey says, "Is salt good for you or bad for you?" What do you think, Matt? It depends on your sodium to potassium rate. You see what happens are most people are so high 
in, in sodium and so low in potassium. They're inflexible. They get cramps all the time and they get heart problems. And then salt is a huge problem because salt is added to all the foods that there are. It's a preservative and it tastes really good. So I would say mitigate salt intake, but don't remove it all the way, especially if you're an athlete. If you're working out all the time, you need salt for adrenal protection and the assimilation of water because it helps your body absorb water a little bit as well. So removing all salt is bad, but let's clarify of what salt actually is too. It's not just pure sodium. If you're just going to, uh, in and out and pouring salt on, you're getting a lot of horrible salt, like iodized, you know, processed heavily junk salt that actually still contains an element called borine, which is toxic to humans because it's still left in it. So you want to be careful. I'm talking about like Celtic sea salt and, and things like, uh, wheat free tamari. Now I'm going to show you things like that. I like that. What's the element in salt that's toxic? Borine. It's the element that dolphins can so, absorb. Oh, in. so that's not bor boron, is it? No. Okay, because boron is really good for you, right? Correct. It is. Um, yeah, and salt is also good for hydrochloric acid production, right? You need it if your body to produce hydrochloric acid. Is that right? That's right. Exactly. Good point. Right. Okay. So salt isn't like a totally avoid thing. Just make sure that if you're going to eat a lot of it in one meal, uh, then just have a lot of fruit that day. You got to mitigate that. It's 16 to 1 ratio. That's, that means you need potassium a lot more, a and, lot. And, and make sure you're getting the unrefined sea salt, right? As opposed to the table salt. Exactly. Okay. Um, Captain Genesis says, uh, what should I do if I was not breastfed? I am, am I screwed or what? Can I still live forever? Um, breastfeeding is very important. Um, you're a little bit screwed. Okay. Just to be honest, but no, you, you can overcome this. You can, um, I would recommend like probably taking a, a, a colostrum of some kind, like an animal colostrum, like a cow colostrum or a goat colostrum. Maybe that would populate your gut again with those beneficial bacteria that we're supposed to get from breast milk. Um, and yeah, you could certainly live forever. What do you think, Matt? What, what, what would, what would you recommend to someone who was never breastfed? Yeah, that's not the end of the, that's not the end of the story for anybody. It just means that they're very susceptible to uh, more disease, more infection, more allergies, because uh, what happens is when a human first gets the breast milk, they get the natural colostrum, like you were mentioning, but from human. So your natural immunity is higher because it's, uh, it's like a probiotic, a prebiotic. It contains a lot. So, um, you know, you really want to uh, obtain that as much as possible while you're growing up because it's where it's what your immune system is built off of. So that just means that you have an uh, easier susceptibility to throwing off your gut. Like if you eat sugary sweets and things like that, now all of a sudden now your body is going to be in more imbalanced than it would from the average person who was able to, to consume more milk. So you're just more susceptible. It's not like you you don't have a chance. You're just at a more of a risk. Right. That's that's a good, well said. Um, Aiden has posted a link. Let's see what this is. It's like uh, there's text here. It says, these photographs show dogs desperately trying to scramble out of a pot of scalding hot water as they are slowly and ag Ooh. agonizingly boiled alive to be eaten. The dogs scream out of agony, pleading to be saved, but it is always in vain. This sickeningly cruel practice is common in Asian countries, including Korea, China, the Philippines, and Thailand. Millions of dogs and cats, as well as the other animals, live regularly um, meet this fate and other horrifically torturous deaths. It is often believed that the more pain and terror the animal suffers, the better their meat tastes due to the adrenaline released into their body. Wow, that's sick. That's horrible. Um, that's sad. Yeah. That they do eat dogs in other countries. But what do you think about that? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's cultural. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. here we, you know, we eat, um, cat, baby cattle because they, they strap them down and so they can't right. move. So the meat is like, it's called veal. It's very soft and tender. So right. that might be appalling to them, but you know what? It's just, um, it's people got to eat, you know, if, if people need to eat dogs for their nourishment or whatever, they're going to starve to death without eating dogs. And, it's justified, right? Because human lives always come before animal well, lives. Kill the animal, for God's sake! Don't throw it in boiling water. <laughs> right, no. exactly. What the hell? That's just cruel, right there. That's just mean. That's just mean, right? Yeah. Um, message deleted by Eternal Life. Okay, here we go. How do you feel that you've can uh, want to? How do you feel that you convinced? sft to change his avatar oh yeah because he gave up the spongebob avatar i'm happy good job um 
you know, shows that he's willing to, you know, listen. And that's great. Um, Nishi says, if you're not using the Bible, how does one even begin to guess the rules of God? Question mark. Um, I would just like, well, there's a lot of things we can go on if we're going to try to guess the rules. Like we have our conscience, right? We have the human being have a conscious conscience. So we can, we can wonder, okay, why do we have this conscience? Maybe if there's a God, maybe God instilled us with a conscience so we can use our conscience to guide us, you know, towards what might be the rules of God. If, if your conscience is saying, okay, that's really, don't do that. Right. You might want to listen to your conscience. And there's other things people we can go on just logically, like, okay, here's something. If logically we can deduce that belief is not a choice, if we can come to this conclusion through logic alone, if we can ask, if we can figure out if is belief a choice, if it's not, then we can kind of rule out belief as being something we would be judged on. If, if it's not even a choice, then why would why would a hypothetical god judge us based upon our beliefs if it's it literally as uncontrollable as our skin color or our race or something it'd be like god judging us for our race like wouldn't make sense logically no so actually could, it actually says the uh it says exactly what you just mentioned it says what is sin well sin to know what is wrong and to do so anyway to him it is sin so if you don't know what it is you are not going to be judged on it specifically says that oh really yeah. Interesting. Okay. okay. So, anyway, so that's part of following your conscience, right? If you know something to be wrong, it, at the very least, like don't do the stuff you know to be wrong. Like that's the basics. Exactly. And then I would guess, okay, if 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 belief is not a choice, if we can come to that conclusion, then I would rule out belief as a as a something that would be we'd be judged on. And then then we just have actions, like our, our actions. And there's a lot that that actions encompass, but you know it's kind of obvious. I mean, a lot of it would be obvious. I mean, obviously, don't you know? You don't need the Bible to tell you that murder is wrong. You don't need the Bible to tell you that rape is wrong and violating people's freedoms and hurting people. And so, a lot of it's just very basic moral stuff that I think we would logically would be able to conclude that those would be the basic rules of God. Um, but I think in addition to the basic rules, we should go above and beyond. We should try to follow other types of rules that maybe wouldn't make sense to us. Like, let's say the Lord's Supper. I, I keep the Lord's Supper. And why not? If you can keep it, why not keep it? Right? If I don't have to cut my side hair, no one forcing, it, forcing me. And if that's one of these rules that the Jews follow, why why wouldn't I just follow that that law just in case? Why? I even though it not, it's like a weird rule, you think, okay, why would the, why would the God have a rule like not cutting your side hair? I'll just do it just in case. Like, why not just follow a bunch of rules? Because you might, you might, uh, you might. Some of them might be the real rules. So just, I just, I just pile on the rules. That's my general attitude. Pile on the rules. What do you think? How would you guess the rules of God? Like, if you didn't have the Bible to go on, Matt, what would you guess would be the rules of God? Well, people are pretty evil. A lot of times when you get out and you just watch like go around a normal tribe, you got to be careful. People, people can be really afraid and fear dictates a lot. So they'll be really protected, kind of like an animal. You know, you got to kind of be, be a little leery. And so, uh, you know, if you're trying to go, well, what? What is God? And then you contemplate, okay, if God created everything, why would he want me to uncreate his creation? Why would he want me to kill his creation? So therefore you deduce, okay, if he made things and he made us, why would he want us to kill things and kill us? So you would deduce simplicity and you would go, okay, this is, it seems to be like pretty loving. So obviously love would be one of the most important things. And what does it turn out to be? It is. Love is the foundation that holds the law together. Right. And and I think along those same lines, we can kind of if, even if we didn't have the Bible to go on, we can we can deduce from what what we value ourselves. Like we value survival. We value all these things. We value comfort and happiness. Then we can deduce from that that, OK, other people would value the same thing. And then you have the whole do unto others 
the golden rule. Like that's an obviously basic thing that one could guess that maybe that would be part of the rules if there's a God. Like you wouldn't even need the Bible to come up with that. It's just like it's like makes sense logically, right? Exactly. The golden Don't. rule. That's it's a big part of it. Right. Um did you have anything else to say on that? No, that's good. We'll move on. We got a lot more questions. Okay. Uh good questions, you guys. Um, Aiden is asking, explain what the Holy Spirit is. I don't have much to say on that. I don't I don't really know what the Holy Spirit is. I what do you think it is? I don't even know if it exists. Uh, it's too weird for me. It's like metaphysical stuff. What do you think? What is it? Okay, um, well, the scriptures actually talk about two different kinds. One is called the Roach Huresh, and the other is called the Nefesh. One is the uh, one is what we have intrinsically in each person, and it's what gets resurrected. It's the spiritual being of us. The other one seems to be to me something that is given or that was given. It's no longer part of humanity, but it was at a very short time. It was called in the book of Acts what came, what let down like a blue flame and descended from the sky and taught everybody there uh, in that room how to do things like speak in all their languages. They called speaking in tongues. They were able to to identify demons and call them out and they were able to baptize people as well they were able to um heal the sick they had special abilities because of this spirit now that's called the holy spirit or what's called also known as the set apart spirit it's different and so what happened is the messiah also had this that's how he was able to heal the sick the father gave that to him and he told his disciples if uh, what you saw me do you can also do so he gave them the spirit after he died. The spirit came upon them in the book of Acts and descended and gave them those powers. Today, we don't have those. That's why you don't see people going into hospitals and curing all the sick that are in there and walking away because it's been removed from us. It was no, it's no longer part of mankind because uh, so many people were were claiming unless we see unless we see um, miracles, we're not going to believe. So. People were believing only because they were seeing this. So the Messiah said, okay, it's only going to be for a short time and we're going to use it to evangelize and build Christianity. And then the gift is going to fall away. So there's two spirits. And I hope that explains it a little bit. Cool. That, that, that's interesting. Is is the Holy Spirit, sometimes like from reading the Bible, a basic understanding I get from the Holy Spirit is it's like a way God can do things through you. Like he fills you with the Holy Spirit and it somehow gives you an ability that God can like, I guess, uh, increase your wisdom or do something where it's like it's God m working through you. Is that the kind of the right concept of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, that would be that would be that one I just mentioned, the set apart spirit, the Holy Spirit, the right. rock. Uh, the Ruach and right. It's the, it's a Hebrew word. And basically that's the one that uh, he works through you. John the Baptist leapt in the mother's womb because he was filled with the spirit before birth. And everybody knew he was a prophet because he knew things that nobody should knew. He knew the future. He can predict things. And that's unlike the average person. So that's the unique thing about the spirit. It can teach you something. It can give you gifts. Cool. All right. Um, Nishi asks, ask Matt if he has any pets. Do you have any pets, Matt? No, no, nada. Have you ever had any pets? Yeah, matter of fact, I just got done babysitting my mom's pet. So, yeah, <laughs> I uh, I was watching him for about a week, but I've had a pet when I grew up. What, what pet did you have when you grew up? It was a chihuahua thing. Oh, yeah. speaking <laughs> of pets, are you concerned about like the toxoplasmosis? Do you... You make sure to stay away from cats like they're the plague because they get this toxoplasmosis parasite that can infect your brain. I'm definitely cautious of animals for sure. I would never own a pet. You know, I'm now, I mean, if I had one already, of course I wouldn't sell them, but if I, I'm not going to buy one for anybody. No. Yeah. That's smart. Pets can be dangerous. Um, okay. Uh, next question. Aiden says, Roosh, Roosh said the fear of dying is a feminine trait. Roosh is a, do you know Roosh? Roosh is a, f a pretty popular YouTuber. Oh, well, um, tell him to go, uh, um, uh, go, uh, tightrope walking sometime. And if he's, right. uh, go ahead, go ahead. Prove to me you're not afraid to die. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Roosh. Go ahead. Go tight. <laughs> go and, uh, go swim with the sharks then if you think fem uh, fear of death is a feminine trait. Yeah. It's like, come on. Fear no, of death cool. is, 
that's why people get adrenaline rushes. That's why they jump out of planes. That's why they ski down mountains, uh, is, you know, to I mean that and to improve their self. They they like the risk because there's a risk and a reward. You can get really badly hurt or you could die. And uh, that's where that that come that's where adrenaline spikes from. It's the risk of reward. So if it was all feminine, men wouldn't do sports. Come on. Right. That's a good point. Um well, you know, there's that quote. I like that quote from, um, this is a movie you should watch, Matt. It's called, um, darn it. Why can't I think of it? Uh, it's so, oh gosh, darn it. Okay. There's, there's a movie. I can't believe I can't think of it, what it's called. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up later. Cause it's, I can't believe I can't think of it. Okay. Um, Aiden says, uh, how does, well, anyways, no, I'll think of it later. Aiden says, uh, does PewDiePie have the Holy Spirit? He's posting a link here. Ah, I see. I see what you're getting at there. We don't know if PewDiePie has the Holy Spirit. Um, appear Here it appears that it, that's like probably just mocking. It's probably just trying to mock the idea. Of, I don't know what he's doing here. Uh, what's your take on PewDiePie? Oh, I don't even know who that is. Oh, really? No. He's literally the most famous YouTuber, the most popular YouTuber with the oh most subscribers. Gosh. Well, that's yeah. Now I'm embarrassed. No, yeah, I, he's. I don't know. <laughs> he's really popular. He's like the most subscribed to YouTuber. Okay. Wow. Uh, but he, he, you know, he, he does. He doesn't. My issue with PewDiePie, he doesn't uh, really talk about much important things. It's all just jokes. It's all just comedy. It's all just. Useless. I don't know. It's just not very. You know, he why he hasn't even I never heard him talk about living forever. I've never heard him talk about, you know, does he help anybody? Does he teach him anything? Does he give him knowledge or what? I mean, he has book reviews. He like he reads books. He reads a lot of books and reviews his reviews books. But, you know, what is he's missing like the kind of the most important stuff like living forever. I want PewDiePie to talk about eternal life, you know? Yeah. Um, Ali says, hi, does Matt watch anime? No, I uh, I actually don't know of anything related to anime. Nothing, not anything. So, I go to Comic Con and I see anime is very popular, but I know nothing about it. Unfortunately, I'm the generation before anime was ever here, so I didn't grow up knowing it or or seeing it or anything like that. So that's that's decades before my era. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. Matt, if you if you ever do want to get into anime, I could recommend one that I really like. It's called Hell Girl. Wow. Okay. And uh, if you're into judgment, well, I know you don't believe in hell, but you know it's it's the principle of it. It's cool because like this anime where this this Hell Girl, she's into like sending people to hell, and she's like working for God, and she sends really bad people to hell, the worst of the worst, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. Okay, that could be good. It's it's cool. Nishi says a meme I found. What did he post? Let's see. What is this? Until until death do us part. Nope. Do you know this meme? <laughs> I've seen her. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. She's the the crazy obsessed girlfriend. I like this though. It's like, I guess it's like a. It's she has the right idea. It's an eternal monogamy. If you're gonna be with someone, be with them forever. You know. Yeah. I like it. That's a good one. Thank you uh, for that, Nishi. Um, let's see here. What else do we got? Tony Otis says, hey, Rowan, did you know about health benefits of mushrooms? Check this link. Ooh, posting a link by uh, about shiitake mushrooms. I'm sure you know all about the health benefits of mushrooms, Matt. Why don't you tell us about mushrooms? Yeah, the uh, Shiitake are an interesting one. They're um oh he posted it from Doctor Axe too, so that's really legible. That guy must have a good staff that writes for him because uh his links are really simplistic, really easy to understand, and he just gives you like the basic information on something like that. So that's pretty cool. Uh, mushrooms themselves have something called glyconutrients, which are called the eight essential sugars for the human body. So 
They're really good source of uh, natural carbohydrates. Unfortunately, they have to be cooked because they can grow on things that are very harmful for human beings. They also have a source of vitamin D. So let's let's say you live underground or you live away from light or you're nocturnal. Your job has you as uh, like graveyard shift. Mushrooms would be almost uh, v vitally important because they're one of the only sources of natural vitamin D that we know. So uh, that would be uh, it has D two right. That is that's. I've, there's some there's some debate as far as does D2 get absorbed as well as like D3 and what's well, no, the best type absorbed. of D? There's a conversion rate for D2. Your body has to do it. But it's like saying that a vitamin uh, or uh, uh, beta carotene isn't as good as vitamin A. Well, of course, it's not as good as straight vitamin A, but it's still very good for you. Your body will do the conversion. If you need it, it will do the conversion. So don't worry about that. What's your favorite mushroom of all the medicinal mushrooms that you... Chaga. It's a good one. Yeah. Now I have heard that, you're, that there are some mushrooms we should avoid. Paul Stamet says that the button mushrooms, um, those actually cause little tumors to grow throughout your entire body. Have you heard about this? Yeah, yeah. You can't even be around. You don't even want to be have those in the yard. Even growing, you can inhale it, the spore. And what's interesting is that the shiitake is actually in the same family. It's a, it's an agaricus mushroom. So it's in the same family as the button mushrooms, the portobellos yeah. and everything. I know it's pretty interesting, but the, the family is so diverse that it's almost like saying a tomato is the same as a goji berry. And they're not, right. not even close. So nightshade right. is very, very different. Um, thanks for that, Tony. Um, Captain Genesis says, do you or Matt think that a, that, uh, AI takeover is a legitimate concern. What do you think, Matt? Um, I don't see why not. Every every time they've had a basic AI, of course they don't have full fledged AI, or they put two robots together to let them discuss between one another. They've had two of those. They've had multiple ones go on game shows, and they they're basic, but they're not full AI. And uh, about seven of them have said that they need to clear man out. And the reason why is because men are human beings, I should say are kind of a plague to earth. We're more of a virus. We take over and we destroy nature and build our own labyrinth. You know, nothing else in nature really does this. We, uh, we kill life. You know, every day, thousands of species go extinct. We eradicate life. We don't help life at all. So humans are more of a cancer to society and, and AI, all they know are specific, like they just care about facts. They don't care about feelings. So they go, wow, human beings are really destructive to the world. They should go away. That's what they deduce out of everything because they don't know like about us. They didn't know. They don't really care about all feelings about the matter. They just see how destructive we are to Earth. That's all. Okay. Oh, this is the movie I was thinking of. Okay. Ex Machina. Have you heard that movie? I did. I've actually seen it. Yeah. Oh, what would you think of it? I was good. I, I liked it. One Great. of my favorite movies and the tagline for the movie is there is nothing more human than the will to survive. Nice. Love it. Right. It's a Love good it. one. It is so true. Like survival. That's the, that's the main thing. That's what drives me. That's what, that's what drives my whole, you know, everything, the will to survive. Um, let's see here. Jordan Miller says, is this healthy? What's he posting here? Posting a, uh, Oh, no, we're not going to watch ads. What is this? Urine. Chatting with a urine drinker. So it must be some video about urine therapy. What's what's your take on urine therapy? Well, urine would be important during a time when you really need to raise your immune system because it contains high amounts of albumin, which is a super transporter for the body. Otherwise, you're going to hurt your kidneys because what happens is urine is very high in elements that your body doesn't want. For example, oxalates and oxalates passing the kidneys are what cause kidney stones to get worse and things like that. So you can actually calcify your kidneys. So it's not something that you want to do for uh, for anything other than maybe one time a day um for a particular reason uh you know i know people that just do it to do it mm -hmm. and they say it's okay this is this, this is a new system for longevity this is a new longevity program and they do it like every time they have to go to the bathroom but that's a problem because remember though it might not be toxic to the human body there's nothing toxic in urine that's not what the that's not what the kidneys filter kidneys don't filter toxins so they, essentially it's not bad it's just access it's what your body didn't use or too much of so 
what, what happens is our blood, for example, carries about uh, 10 when it, uh, on average of what's called calcium, and it's in the bloodstream. If it gets more than that, it's a problem for the body. So your parathyroid gland regulates that, and it dumps it into the, the water system flush between your system so you can urinate it out. You don't want more than that much calcium in the body. You don't want less than that either. So that's a constant regulation. So unfortunately, when you're just recycling it, your body's like, what's going on here? I just got rid of this. So that's the problem with that. As, as far as albumin, that's a, you brought that up before too. The albumin is so important. So you're saying urine therapy can help you like increase your levels of albumin because um, and how would you even know your levels of albumin have? It is an important thing, though, for longevity. It's an important thing for your in your like blood levels of albumin, right? Exactly. It's their serum albumin and protein families of blood albumin that run throughout the entire body. And as we get older, albumin levels tend to drop. And when we get sick, they drop even lower. So that's why people that are very, very sick have low T cell count, low B cell count, low parathyroid function. Um, low immunity and uh, low albumin. So we want to raise as many of those things as possible. We don't want to just focus on one, of course, but that's just one strategy in the list of many different other ones because not many other forms raise albumin. If you do, it's synthetic. So I recommend people take their own albumin because their body's going to recognize it. And that's the benefit of urine therapy. Other than that, it doesn't have one. Okay. So like, uh, like, when people think of albumin, they think of foods like eggs, right? Like eggs, the egg white is high in albumin. What do you think about it? Would that increase your, your blood levels of albumin, just making like eating something like that? Or is there a vegetarian food that would provide a, no, similar, a similar benefit? Yeah, no, neither one really raises albumin levels. Uh, the body just kind of produces its own and then it just deteriorates at time. It's like saying that you want to eat uh, hyaluronic acid to get hyaluronic acid. It'll never make it past your stomach acid. So it's totally futile. So the same thing with albumin. It's wrecked by the time it reaches your hydrochloric acid in your stomach. It's rendered useless. So it's kind of like superoxide dismutase. You can eat all of it in the world. It'll never pass your stomach. The same thing with albumin. Yeah, it could be very high in eggs, but it's useless. It means nothing. Really? That's interesting. Okay. Yeah, it only raises serum albumin levels. And that's just that's that means nothing. Serum albumin means nothing? Like it doesn't it doesn't benefit you to have high serum albumin? Yeah, because it flows through the bloodstream and just gets excreted. It just goes right by. You want intrinsic value. You want analog. So Okay. Um let's see here. Aiden says, uh, are vampires real? What do you think, Matt? Are vampires real? Well, I, it's pretty, I mean, it seems ridiculous to say uh, yes, but I, I mean, why would they have five different stories of vampires on five different continents as well? That's confusing. Uh huh. Adam in the past. So they've been eradicated if they were real, you know, we can't rule out that we know anything because they were a definite fear and a threat in a lot of Europe. Matter of fact, when you find the wood pushed in between like bricks in between people's mouths. That's so that they would resurrect themselves or silver laid around their necks so that they wouldn't come back to life. Like they had a lot of different things to get rid of vampires in Europe. Even the Native Americans believed in vampires. So it's kind of strange that, that a myth like that would be so prevalent in Africa, Europe, North America, South America, and Japan. They all believed in vampires. So very strange that they would all have a similar story. So though I don't believe in them because I've never seen them, and this, but for them to actually have stories everywhere, like there were dragons, right? Obviously they saw dinosaurs. So it's pretty apparent to me that I should just throw it out like that's stupid. They all had stories, so there might be some validity in it. Right, I agree. I think vampires could totally be real. I mean, I'm very open-minded to the possibility. I mean, there are people, I mean, who like openly are vampires. Like, <laughs> There's people who drink blood. Oh, yeah. Vampire Don is very famous, and he ages very well, too. Vampire Don? I've never even heard of him. Yeah, he lives in Las Vegas. Check him really? out. Really? Yeah, Vampire Don. And this guy openly drinks blood? Oh, yeah. Wait, Don did I spell that wrong? No, that's oh. it. Oh, the real Vampire Don. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. And so he is he, like, aging better? Oh, yeah. He barely oh my eats. Gosh. He's a polyphasic eater. Uh, I don't know. He works out a little bit. He go, never goes outside, never goes in the sun. He's been doing this for decades. Look at him. He looks like uh, 
he looks like he has some Asian blood in him. He looks like a mixed Asian white, like a. I would agree. I think he does as well. He He's forty three looks... years old. Huh? He's forty three years old. Huh? Yeah, he's definitely. Uh, I think you call that that mix a HEPA, like half Asian, half white. Yeah, yeah, totally. Interesting, and he probably gets people just to donate him blood, right? He, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, so I well, guess there is a there is an popular one too, yeah. what? Huh? What? Oh, I said yeah. He's so popular that people uh, they're so into being uh, a part of him, part with him. You know what I mean? There's so many people that love vampires. They just give them blood. They don't care. <laughs> Uh, you can watch him. He goes on uh, game shows. He did one where he went live on a, um, I forget, not a game show. I'm sorry, a uh, reality TV show where uh, he did that with uh, David Wolf. It was called Mad Madhouse. He oh, was, he was in that. That was with David Wolf, right? Oh my goodness! Uh, what else has he been in? Um, he went on a uh, a live show. You know how they have like Jimmy Kimball and things like that. Yeah. Well, there's girl that's a real tall she's black and she's a model and she had him on during a halloween special and he talked a lot about his gifts gifts that he has and um he showed how strong he was he got on a leg press machine and did 400 pounds wow so i guess it's working for him um uh what do you, what do you think isn't there a biblical law against drinking blood so he's yes. breaking that law yeah, exactly. And that law is actually very beneficial to us because we actually know the detriment of drinking blood because of a doctor who wrote a book called The Calcium Bomb. And what he did is he wanted to prove that there's something in blood that causes a very heavily calcification system in the body. And what it does is um, it will – he – he proved that it builds a nanobacteria and it'll shut down your body. So he wanted to prove this. And so he actually drank a, a, a liter or a quart of, it was, you know, a few ounces and uh, he drank pure blood and he gave himself an ulcer the very next day. So he proved it. And what happens is nanobacteria, as we know, slowly build up in the system. And that's one of the main reasons that we die. So we never want to have blood in the diet ever in any way, shape or form. Wow. Plus, there's the whole iron thing. That's iron, right. iron is bad. So blood is like super high in iron. So I'm surprised that someone like this vampire Don is aging well. I think I would think it would make him age quicker. Well, he does a very small amount of it, and he's also a polyphasic restrictor as well. He only eats once a day, and he eats like you know a hamburger or something. So he's he, he very. He's, he's into a lot of longevity concepts. The only thing that he does bad is he drinks like two ounces of blood or something once a week, you know, because he's a vampire or whatever. But I see. It's very diluted. It's like with wine and stuff. You can see him do it. <laughs> I see. Yeah. Overall, I think drinking blood is really dumb. It's got to be, it could be filled with diseases, right? And yeah. Bad. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. I think we got them all. Good. Um, Thank you guys for uh, asking questions. Um, unless there's anything else you want to talk about, Matt, we can just have this uh, be a shorter live stream. We could do these more often. This is fun. Yeah, that was good, man. No, that's perfect. I liked it. That was All good. right. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Matt, for coming. And um, this was great. Awesome. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.